Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly with Magmod. Hey, I am excited for another episode of How I Shot It. And today I get to chat with Kevin and Patty Shoemake in just a second. Right. So Kevin and Patty, guys, thanks for joining me. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we, yes. we got you on live now. <laughs> You know what, guys? It's funny because we did this new format, and I actually I have these two squares, but but we just barely fit. Yeah, exactly. We'll have to lean in. So I'll tell you what. In the beginning here, I'll just switch between my camera and your camera. Um, but uh, guys, I wanted to just give you guys a minute here and give everyone an introduction where you're based out of, um, how they can find you, all that good information. Cool. So we're out of Victoria, Texas. That's South Texas. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Moonlight Elegant Photography. You can find us on the web at MoonlightElegantPhotography.com. Uh, Facebook. That's about yeah. it. It's all Moonlight Elegant, <laughs> huh? Here, actually, let's yes. bring up your your website. Um, in fact, it's funny. I, I actually pulled up the uh, the senior version of the website, uh, which happens to be one of the first ones we're going to talk about, um, or at least some of the senior photos. But I wanted to just show. Let me let me actually go back here. Um, so that's a senior gallery. Let me go all the way back to the beginning. Um, incredible site, you guys. I absolutely love your website. I love how the, the, your style and your editing is just insanely beautiful. It's so, so pretty. Thank you. Uh, um, but uh, as we get started here, we are gonna show a few of your senior photos. And I gotta say, you guys have done an incredible job um, with these senior images. Is it, I, I, your shoots are like so fantastic. Like, like a lot, it's not like you just take them to a park and shoot it. How do you guys plan these shoots with these seniors? You know, that's, <laughs> so like every shoot that we do is right. It's kind of, it's kind of special to our unique to that senior. So I always ask like, what are your hobbies, your interests, you know, uh, what are you into that kind of thing? And I try to incorporate those things in their shoot. Like the one young lady with the basketball, you know, they were district yeah, yeah, champs. Yeah. Uh, she's a all-star basketball player, right? She was also valedictorian at her school. Nice. Uh, so that was kind of a special moment for her. And, that was a shot that I had planned out months, weeks in advance, uh, wanting to shoot that shot. And yeah. uh, they found me a goal that was cemented in the ground and actually one that would crank up or down. Uh, of course, they tell me that after I got the 13 foot ladder out. So anyway, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what, Kevin? The actually, other shots you're... were just. Oh, so, Go sorry, Kevin. I was going to say, since you're chatting about it, do you mind? I'm going to actually bring up the full image here um, so everybody cool. can see it. So now, now tell us about it. So you found a, 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 a actually, I got to show everyone the basketball hoop. Here's what it looks like from behind the scenes. Yeah. And and so I'm sorry. So now the, tell everyone about this shot again. So I didn't want to shoot it, you know, down low at her. I wanted to shoot up at her because of the yeah. background. Uh, I really wanted to incorporate a skyline in the shot because it was a clear backboard. And uh, so I just brought a 13 foot ladder. Uh, she was willing and able to get up there. She got up there put the 13 foot ladder right there in front of her kind of off to the right side. And I stepped up the ladder and used 11 by 24 millimeter lens and uh -huh. shot that at probably like a pretty low, uh, I forgot what it was. It was probably around 11 or 12, 14 millimeters, I guess. Okay. So and shot that shot. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. And I love, actually, it's kind of fun that you just jumped right into it. Cause it, I, it's fun to see and just how I love the behind the scenes, how you can see, and then this is great. I love how you're climbing up there and you're like, I, I imagine you use the ladder to get her up there. Is that what you did? Yeah, we used the ladder to get her up there. And of course I was right there with her. Um, I wished I would have got a behind the scenes shot of this because, but you know, my wife was holding the light. Uh, the family was talking at the time to the people that owned the house. So I didn't get that behind the scenes because most of my parents are taking those behind the scenes for me. Yeah. Um, but I, so that was unfortunate. I didn't get that shot. Hey, no, that's all right. Well, Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm excited because the first, uh, like, I want to say three or four photos that we're going to talk about are actually all your senior photos, which we don't really get to cover a lot of senior photos. Um, so this will be fun to, to show everybody. Now, Kevin, before cool. we um, jump into these images, I want to mention, oh, there's actually here. Look at this. We got a, we got a few. Uh, we got people. Let's bring Patty back in, by the way. Patty, she snuck out okay. on us. Patty, are you right there? Yep, she snuck out. Awesome. Slide on in here, honey. Um, I, I want to show you guys, you got people tuning in from, you got Greece over here. Um, uh, oh, by the way, Chelsea was just saying on that last one, the behind the scenes is so crazy. Shows show goes to show how you can make magic from anywhere. Totally agree with you there, Chelsea. Cool. Um, you. Hey, you got Tamara. Hey, Tamara. <laughs> yeah. She's tuning in as well. And, and, uh, I got Brooke says, love your stuff. 
You guys already got nice. a lot of fans on here. So Patty, I know, I know as the screen gets bigger and we show the image, I know it's just a kind of a space for one person there. So I want to make sure that uh, we get to actually acknowledge how important you are to this. Cause I know the business Moonlight Elegant Photography, it's the two of you work together, right? Right. Do you both shoot as well? Yes. I do at weddings. You do weddings? Okay. Because I saw in some of the behind the scenes that we're going to do, it shows you like very actively there helping do the dresses and all kinds of stuff, uh, holding the flash right. and things like that. So then on the weddings you shoot. Now, do you guys do you guys do anything outside of photography as well? Or is photography your main, main go? Well, we used to do. So we did entertainment for like 14 years, Moonlight Entertainment. Uh, okay. So in our community, everybody knows Moonlight. So when we chose a business name, you know, we thought about doing our names, but then we have such a brand recognition with Moonlight here. We chose Moonlight Elegant Photography. Got it. Got it. How cool. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, you got lots of people tuning in, you guys. I got uh, from Belgium. Isn't it? This is my favorite part oh, of the wow. show, showing everybody where they're tuning in from. So, guys, as you're as you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. It's always fun. We got Steven from Flagstaff. He's about a stone's throw from me. Cool. Well, about three hours, but close enough. We got Derek, who was on the show last week from Tennessee. Appreciate you being here, Derek. Um, right on. Hey, well, well, guys, you already jumped into that first image. And, and uh, oh, and by the way, I just got to point out, I'm going to try to do the camera less on me as possible because this morning I gave myself a terrible haircut. <laughs> so everybody can see how bad that looks. <laughs> but, uh, how funny. but but let's go ahead and, uh, and and Kevin, let's let's jump right into a few more of these images. And, and then, you know what? I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I do that, can I show everyone where to find you guys real quick? I know you mentioned your Instagram, Moonlight Elegant yeah. Photography, but guys, go give them a follow. They are incredible. And if you see, if I scroll down, there's some just beautiful, beautiful shots. Um, and you said you're based out of Victoria, Texas, right? Yeah, Victoria, Texas. Awesome. All right, Kevin, you ready to do this? And Patty, by the way, I know you're on the side there. If you, if there's anything you want to add, please jump in at any time. We can okay. hear your input cool. as well. Awesome. Um, so Kevin, tell us about this one and I'm excited to show everyone the behind the scenes video that comes with it as well. Well, that shot, uh, is downtown in Victoria and, uh, everybody does the same old shots, right? So I wanted to do something different again. It's like when I meet with my seniors, I'm asking them, you, what are your interests? What are your hobbies? And I'm trying to bring that into their shot. So when this young guy say he likes to skateboard, I'm thinking, you know, how cool would it be to put him on the wall? And, and it's a shot that I've always wanted to try. So I knew how to do the shot. It would just yeah. find somebody with with abs that could pull it off. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. Well, it does require a bit of ads. Can, do you think I can share the uh, behind the scenes video now? Oh. Kind of show everyone how they did it. Yeah. Awesome. Please, Let's please. do this. Let's show everyone. Here. Yeah, there it is right there. So Kevin, we'll watch this video and then I, I want you to explain kind of what you were trying to pull together here. Well, I wanted it to look like. I know it's doing. Hang on, I'm already. I wanted it to look like he was actually skateboarding on the wall, right? And uh, what you don't see in that building right there is a wedding going on. I've got the actual wedding photographers behind me watching me pull this shot off. <laughs> and uh, instead of being in their reception, but anyway, uh, it was really cool to to kind of bring that stool in there and take the stool out and just kind of make the appearance that he's actually skateboarding on the wall. I know I had a lot of people that said, this can't be real. It's got to be fake. It's got to be a composite. But it's actually just... A little bit of trick photography, I guess, however you want to call uh -huh. it. Well, so. so the interesting part on this is that, uh, I mean, in order to pull this off, normally you do like a plate shot. Is that, did you do a plate shot as well? No, no plate shot. So how, okay, so hold on. I got to go back to this video. <laughs> <laughs> go back and watch the video. If you, so see the stool underneath him? Yeah. So I just literally just erased the stool on Photoshop. It's real simple. Okay. Got it. Well, that was my, so my question, the biggest thing was, I was thinking was normally they'll put it on a tripod and they'll do a shot mm -hmm. like this and then they'll pull the person out, do another shot of just the wall and, and, uh, and then, you know, replace it. But you just like to torture yourself and do a lot of Photoshop work, I guess. I just tortured myself and did Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, I had a plate shop shot, but it, it really wasn't that hard. The cloning tool, Photoshop's got so much more advanced. It's, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an amazing shot, man. You did an incredible job. And I think one of the biggest Thank things you. that I've noticed on this too, is oftentimes people will use clothing to kind of like drape it over as if it's kind of floating down over like a stool or something. And then they, it's even mm -hmm. less to Photoshop, but here again, you, you know, he's a tight clothing and everything else. And so, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is your editing work is amazing. And I love the fact that you, 
you got creative with the senior. It's super, super cool. Um, oh, that's a great shot. I love it. He loved it. His family loved it. So it's good it's stuff. Really cool. Well, we actually, we have another one with the same young man. I want to bring this up as well. Oh, and by the way, I'll just, uh, um, Aniket, he's saying this looks great. Uh, I got Hannah. I think I might have thrown this one up. Love the great behind the scenes. Um, Thank you. Oh, and Derek is asking, was it a content aware removal on this tool? Uh, you know, you can go that route. For me, I just used uh, the cloning tool and okay. just I'm very meticulous. So, I mean, I went through there with a fine tooth comb and just really took it out and fixed it. Got it. Got it. Wow. So. Impressive. I love it. Um, Thank and then you. there's another shot right here. This is the same senior. Um, and it looks like, is this similar or is this a different location? That's actually a, his mom and dad's restaurant here locally. So it's an old restaurant going way back. And it's actually an old, uh, from like the 1950s. They used to drive up in there in their old cars. And, and it's kind of like a Sonic, you know, it's got the whole drive in feel like that. Um, and this is kind of a local historical restaurant. And uh, my brother actually owns this restaurant. Um, it's called Moo Moo's. And he works there and he loves the fifties and he wanted like a greaser shot. Uh, and I said, dude, this, let's do this right here. The sky is all real. There's no, uh, compository on this shot. It was just, you know, you'll yeah. see the behind the scenes, I hope, but it's a great shot. Yeah, actually here, let's bring up the behind the scenes. And I noticed uh, in a lot of these photographs that we're going to show today, you have the, uh, the mag box is being used. Is that kind of your go-to mm -hmm. modifier? Would you say? Yeah, I used to use, uh, more of the spheres and stuff, but now I use the mag box pretty much religiously, almost every shot, because I, I like the ease of going from soft to focused diffuser. Uh, so down here in South Texas, we have a lot of sunlight, right? We have a lot of whiteout days, a lot of harsh sunlight. So I can throw the focus diffuser on it really fast. And I always tell my clients, as long as I get the lighting good on you guys, I can create the rest. So good lighting is the bones to pretty much every shot for me. Uh, and being able to go from from what up two stops to a soft diffuser is just makes such a big difference in the way you shoot. Yeah. No, and 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 just so everyone knows what what Kevin for if you're not familiar with the focus diffuser, basically, you know, normally you put a, a diffusion panel like I have on this light above me here, and it, it's gonna kill that light. In other words, you're gonna lose a stop or two. And the focus diffuser allows all that light to go through while giving you kind of that focused light, you know, putting it in a particular area. So um man and i gotta say your clouds in texas whew, i wish we had clouds like this in some days we, we have like it's you know zero humidity and so it's like we have the, no oh, big man. clouds or anything it's always very clear skies but these are incredible um good stuff i really like this and i gotta say for those who have seen this these shows before they know that one of my favorite things about photography or about images is when you have a really cool shot and then you happen to see something in that shot, maybe small, it's not the main focus of the image, but it makes it stand out and it makes it even better. It's, I, I, I've heard the word punctum being described as, as you know, when you see something in the image that makes it even better, like, whoa. And the one thing that stood out to me when I kind of looked at this image, Kevin, you might know where I'm going with this, is the sign in the background where it says class of 2022, Isaac Mahan. Is that, did you do that in Photoshop as well? Or did they actually put that up? No, I actually did that in Photoshop. I love so that. It's, it's a real, real easy effect type tool with, and then you just double click on it. And you can add the lighting behind the, the letters. It, so. did, it looks like you skewed it a little bit as well. To kind of I skewed it. it a little bit to make it kind of fit the sign. Uh, and the other cool thing, I thought you were going to bring this up. Is if you look at the bumper, you can actually see the behind the scenes, but I actually took out the behind the scenes as far as like the, the mag box and me and my wife. So, you know, I, the, the key to every good photograph is paying attention to details, right? So it's, mm -hmm. that for me is real important and I'm trying to catch all those little details to make it a better image. So that's so true. Yeah. You, you would have seen you guys. That's, that's funny right there in the reflection. Good deal. Yeah, I love it's that. Cool. It's such a cool shot. So again, for those, uh, I, I kind of brought these up earlier, but here's a behind the scenes. Um, you got that light there. So I noticed it, it, the light is set up here, but then you shot it from over here. The light was the same though. It looks like, right. Yeah. Kind of over to that right side. Same. Yeah. Same light. I just kind of moved my, you know, when you're shooting, you start to see and start to develop the symmetry and you start to develop the shot. And yep. then, um, when I was shooting this, I was like, Oh, wait a minute, the shots over here. And I moved to the front of the car and, and incorporated the restaurant behind him with the light is my secondary modifier, the natural sunlight coming through the clouds. Uh, I always use the natural sunlight most of the time as my, my secondary modifier. So, yeah, love it. Love it. 
Well, let's bring up another senior shot. And like I said, this is uh, from the very get go. One of the things that just absolutely impressed me was, well, one, your editing style, which I absolutely love. Um, but two, just the amount of incredible senior photos that you guys produce. Uh, so definitely go check out their website and their Instagram. You guys, you can see a lot more. Um, but uh, tell us about this photograph as well. Well, this little girl, we, we had been shooting in New Brunswick, Texas, and we shot a lot of her pictures downtown in historical district. And it was getting close to, to basically uh, the sun was setting. We had about 10 or 15 minutes and we had to drive out of town and try to find a location for a, for a shot. And this all happened really quick. We we're rushing. We, I said, we turned down the first road to our right that was in the country getting out of town. And it just happened to be this street right here. We just parked the car. I removed some telephone poles and wires. Uh, it's natural sunset going on behind her. And dad's holding the light for me. And we just captured this really cool shot. That is awesome. We actually, we have another behind the scenes here. Let me pull this up. Yeah, you can see that sunset just with the iPhone even, or, or not iPhone, whatever, cell phone, or I can't tell. Is that a cell phone or does somebody actually take that picture? Actually, it could be both. That's actually a, a mom taking the picture. Yeah. And uh, that's dad holding the uh, mag box for me. And yeah. what's really cool about me bringing the parents into the shot is they get invested in the moment. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like the experience and it brings the whole family in. So when we have our in person, like when they come over to see the pictures for the first time, yeah. uh, they're like invested, man. They, they love the shots, you know, they love the, the, cause they were a part of it, creating it. So it's really cool. That's funny. It, it, you're right. Cause then when they go back, the dad can be like, yep, I was holding the, holding the light for this shot right here. <laughs> I'm the one who lit her, you know, lit her up. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's Pretty super much. cool. I love that idea. I, the only thing I've done with parents is I'll have them hold a reflector. Um, sometimes yeah. even if I don't even need a reflector, but just so they stop talking to their kid or telling their kid to smile when I don't want <laughs> to smile. But so I'll just be like, Hey parents, can you hold a reflector in front of your face here? And it makes it more comfortable. Yeah. That's my secret. And, um, I love that. Uh, super, super cool, man. I, and, and so you guys now, same thing here, you got this really cool license plate that says class of 2022. <laughs> Was this also done in Photoshop? Yeah. So I made that in Photoshop in about 10 minutes, I guess. And just, uh, put that on there. It's a little extra touch. And then I added a little bit of highlights to the hood of the car to bring out the hood of the car because the car was black. So it just kind of got lost in the picture. And to bring out the hood, I was like, man, I played around with this for a pretty good while. I just added a lot of highlights to the edge of the hood to bring it out. So that is so cool. Kevin, where'd you learn all your photo skills, your Photoshop skills? You know, actually I've been doing Photoshop for, man, for years. Right. Yeah. And then I had a really good friend of mine named David Bird. Uh, he's with Reality Reimagined. Uh, I want to give him a little plug because he's the one that actually tutored me and trained me and, and kind of took me to another level. Right. And, uh, you know, took my basic Photoshop skills to a whole nother level. So, wow. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, uh, Kevin, we've got a few questions before we go any further. Actually, I'm going to pull up this screen right here. Cause I'm going to pop these up and let you do some talking here. Uh, Jay-Z Mora says, how did you work with the reflection with the car? I think referring to the, uh, um, that first red car. I think is the, what the shot is referring to. And I think it might uh, be. So how did I work? Bumper. Oh, in the bumper, how did I work with that? So some of that you can do with content aware to take out like the subject for myself or the parents that were standing there with us. Uh -huh. um, you know, again, it's, it's all about the details. So I know that I have a lot of photographers that follow my page and those photographers are going to look at that stuff. Yes. So me, I guess somebody taught me this a long time ago when I'm, when I'm shooting or editing a picture, I always shoot as if I'm going to enter it in competition. That makes me work harder, pay more closer attention to the details. Um, and I use probably the clone tool or the uh, content aware tool to remove most of those people in that shot inside the bumper. Very cool. All right. So Hannah says, what flash are you using in that one? It looks like you're using the Bowens mount with the studio strobe. What flash? Do I'm you actually use? using a ProPhoto B10 plus with the, uh, the MagMod ring adapter for, for the uh, ProPhoto. Nice. Love it. Uh, Brian has a quick comment. He says, love that there's such a difference between the BTS and the final shot, completely different ambience. Uh, yeah, so, oh, go ahead. So that's, that's very true, right? I'm actually glad you brought that up. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I, how do I get that like that? So I always adjust for ambient light first and then I add my light second. So, uh, pretty much any shot that I do, I'm going to start out without a flash. And then okay. I love shooting with off camera flash just because I can create more detail on my shots, like capture these beautiful skies uh, straight out of camera. So I adjust my ambient first on my viewfinder 
and I get my sky and everything else exactly the way I want it to look, and then I just add the light. So whether I'm using a soft box on a mag box or a focus diffuser, depending on the time of day, that's how I'm going to get that perfect key lighting, I guess. Gotcha. I love that. That's something I, I like to do as well. I'll actually kind of step to the side of the client and I'll just focus on the sky, making sure I get my sky just as I want. I do this little finger thing because I'm, I'm already imagining like rolling the shutter. Oh, yeah. Um, usually, yeah. Usually adjusting the shutter speed and then and then uh, getting it dialed in just right and then light the client up afterwards. Um, so Brooke has a, a comp complex question here and I love it. She says basically she wants to know your favorites on everything. So she wants to know your uh, uh, favorite. Let's see. I'm going to spread this question out a little bit so we can see more of it here. I want to learn about your best favorite products from this type of lighting. I'd love to know all your favorites from the battery packs to the diffusers. Whew. <laughs> okay. Well, try to make this short and sweet. Um, I started out using the 8200s uh, by Godox, and I still have them, actually. Uh, I still use them on occasions uh, for certain shoots just because I can slap the mag gels on there quicker. Uh, if I'm going, I'm going for like a silhouette and I want to backlight the couple. Uh, as far as the other lights that I use, I use Pro Photos a lot. I switched over a couple of years ago, I guess. Uh, I can still use the mag grips on the A1s. Uh, it's a little tight to get it on there, but I like the fact that I can conveniently slap a gel on there real fast. Yeah. So uh, for me, the modifiers, it's all Magbox. Um, I mean, Magmod. Uh, the simplicity, the ease, the quickness, it's all important when you're shooting these shots and you're on, you know, you don't have a lot of time. So you're trying to do these special shots and you have to do them fast. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, hope it, I answered it comes down to that speed. Yeah. What, is there anything else? I mean, so I know I, I've seen some behind the scenes here where you have a spider holster. You wear a lot of spider holsters. Is that something you wear? Yeah. I wear the spider holster for just for convenience. Right. Cause like, and I use like a, what do you call it? Like a lens bag from think tank on one uh -huh. side. Okay. Spider holster on the other side. So I always have my 85 millimeter in my pouch usually. Uh, okay. And I do shoot with that. I shoot with 85 millimeter quite a bit. If it's earlier in the day with a lot of sun, I just shoot wide open, raise up my shutter and put my, uh, my pro photo in high speed sync. And I probably shoot it with the soft diffuser on the mag box at that time. Uh, it's more of my portraiture work. Uh, and then I basically do like my landscape shots. I'm usually shooting with an 11, 24 millimeter lens or a 24 to 70. And I'm also shooting with uh, focus diffuser quite a bit on those shots. Got it. So Francis was asking your favorite lens. It sounds like I heard 11 to 24 or 11 to, what was it? 11 to what? Well, 11 to 24 millimeter lens for my, uh, what I call like my, my timeless shots when I'm doing a really wide angle shot. Sure. Uh, I use that quite a bit. Okay. And then you said 2470 as well. 2470. If I don't want to go, you know, if you, you know, like when you use an 11 by 24 fisheye lens, you get a lot of distortion, right? A lot yeah. of uh, like Bigfoot or whatever. So you yes. got to be really careful with that lens. Um, I use a 24 by 70 a lot too. Nice. And then I also use the 85 millimeter quite a bit. Nice. Patty, what's your favorite what? lens? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the 85. I like the bokeh it makes, the bokeh effect. Nice. Nice. I like the 85 as well. Um, all right. So this next image is pretty mind blowing guys. Uh, I'm going to bring this up and I think, I think the image is mind blowing, but also the way you guys set this up is incredible. So I can't wait to show the behind the scenes, but tell everyone about this image and how you lit it and how you shot it. Oh man. So when this girl contacted me to do her wedding, um, when I found out she was a foreman on a pipeline crew and drove heavy equipment and in my younger life, you know, I used to run heavy equipment. So this really was appealing to me. I was like, Oh man, I finally got me somebody with heavy equipment. And uh, when we started talking about the shot and I started telling her what my vision of the shot was, uh, initially was to have her stand on the bucket of a track hoe, which we did do, right? Um, they ended up bringing this heavy equipment down to the lake and putting it along the shoreline for me. And uh, a lot of her crew guys did. And uh, basically we set these shots up and, uh, and we just, you know, it's a real sky. That was a real moment. That's my wife. Uh, Patty getting her situated on the swing that we built over there. They brought a lot of the stuff and we put it all together and yeah. hooked it up on a boom. That's actually a boom. So that's uh, what they use to lower the pipes into the pipeline. And oh. uh, we put her out on the swing and and uh, there it was. I mean, it was, it was magic that, that day. crazy. Nice. I love this. I love, it's funny. It, and here she's sitting up, but then, or, or there she's sitting, but then it looks like she stood up. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, she was yeah, not. We had her stand up. And uh, I mean, it's, you, the hook's at the very top, 
but it's uh i just love this shot because it's you know we don't i don't mean this to sound bad a lot of photographers use models for a lot of their shots i don't shoot a lot of models mine are real clients and my job is to make them feel like a model and try to make them feel as beautiful as possible right that day because it's you know it means a lot to them so this was a really incredible really fun shoot no yeah natural clouds was this because i know i know in the south and and i think texas is part of you know what they would call the south i know like the southern bride likes to do kind of like a kind of like a creative shoot you know before the wedding was this mm -hmm. like like before like a couple of weeks prior to the wedding or was this the actual day of the wedding this was probably shot about a month before the wedding okay. uh so in the south texas we still do a lot of bridal sessions where we just go out uh -huh. with the bride and pamper her and basically just shoot her pictures and uh -huh. um, this creates really cool stuff that's awesome that that is so cool and I, I i wish more brides would do this because on the wedding day it seems like you know when everything is so complicated you, you, yes you can squeeze in five ten maybe even 30 minutes if you're lucky like portraits of the bride but to be able to take them out and do incredible things like this and things that are meaningful you know to her knowing yeah. that she you know use the machinery that she literally works with um so so cool um i love it here i'm gonna go back <laughs> I, I gotta pull up this selfie shot because uh, diego added a uh, Magmod so quick, even had time for a selfie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So I don't get those very often, but I'm glad I took one that day. So it was pretty, it is, we got like probably 80 degree humidity down here. So it was, it was uh, really hot that day too. That is so cool. I love it. Great job, Kevin and Patty. I love that shot. It is so cool. Um, have you had Thank anyone you. request the same photo since you, after you took it? Any other clients? You know, I don't know if I'm going to get an opportunity to do a lot more of this. Yeah. Well, she had to get an 18 wheeler, bring down two big old heavy pieces of equipment. I mean, it was a big undertaking just to pull that shot off. And uh, she had a lot of help from her, her fellow employees and her boss and everybody was all for it. I mean, it was just, it was such an opportunity to get to shoot that and picture. We to that yeah. And we, and we try not to reshoot a lot of our shots. We try to make it unique to that individual. And, and if we shoot something similar, we always try to make it a little different. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so cool. And I, and I gotta say, one of the other things that really makes this image special, I think, and I don't know whose idea this was exactly, but that the the florals that go down the rope there, it, it makes it yeah. it makes that it kind of adds that that beautiful touch to it as well. Again, one of those small little things, but whoever thought of that detail, uh, hats off to them for that. I actually think the bride did. I yeah. think the bride actually brought she brought the swing and the rope, which yeah. we had you know we had the idea for the boom right. And then yeah. she brought all that stuff down and we just had our boomer out over the water. And she said, yeah, I'm fine with doing that. And I'm like, well, girl, let's go. You're going out over the water then. So and it <laughs> just worked so cool. out. I love it. I'm going to show the behind the scenes one more time. So everyone, get I just love it. that's, that's so you fun, don't have man. the video where the guy's pushing the swing out. I don't, oh, I don't, no. I don't see the video. Do you have it somewhere? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about it. It's fine. Right. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to look for that on your Instagram or something. So good, you guys. Now, this is another one of those shots where it's so funny because you see this and it looks like this just epic, like, whoa. And then you see the behind the scenes and you're like, oh, OK, it was just like a little tiny. Well, not little, <laughs> but a bit of a puddle, but you guys made it look like so epic and, and beautiful. Tell us about this one. So that one was eighteen hundred feet of, you know, above sea level. And wow. uh, again, you know, I'm almost fifty five years old. I was probably about fifty three then, fifty four. And. Patty and I had to climb the tallest granite mountain. I know it's in Texas. I don't know if it's the tallest granite in national, whatever. So we had to climb up there. And uh, man, I got to tell you what, that was like stair stepping on steroids. So I was, <laughs> I was wore out. We had to, we had to sit down for like 20 minutes and just get our breath. Uh, Funny. And it happened to rain the morning of, so that water kind of landed in this little weird crevice right up here. And it uh -huh. made this triangular, you know, there's no Photoshop on that. So you, as you can see right there, and I have the dad holding the 8200 and I just slapped the sphere and probably one or two grids on there just to get the light and throw it over there and just, you know, power its way up and it just happened to work out. And uh, we were actually off the ground pretty good ways on that shot. I got knee pads on because I'm old, man. <laughs> that granite rock hurt. So. No, actually, Kevin, that was one of the things when I noticed this behind the scenes and you wearing knee pads, I was like, that is so smart. Because there's so often yeah. that we are, we're, we're crouched down on our knees, especially if you're kneeling on granite. I mean, but yeah, well, I'm was six really foot smart. five, so I have to squat. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, that's. It, but again, look at look at look at the behind the scenes, everybody. I mean, look, it's just a puddle basically where rain had collected, and then you see it here, and it looks like this just beautiful. I don't know. 
I, I, I don't know. It's amazing. I just love, I love the angle on how you got nice and low. Was this shot with the 11 by 1124 lens? Yeah. 1124. No, that was actually shot with probably the uh, 2470. Okay. If I'm not just mistaken. Yeah. Got it. So, so cool. And you shot it and you litter with, uh, or lit them with the mag sphere, you said, right? With the mag sphere with the 8200. Nice. Very cool. And here's another one. This one actually kind of has a similar vibe to it, um, just in a different location. But um, tell us about this shot. So that was one of my uh, senior influencers for this coming year, right? And Patty and I have never really shot seniors before until about two months ago, uh, a month and a half ago. And we've just started. So in a month and a half's time, I think I've shot like 10 or 12 seniors. And getting these edits out, you know, was key, right? But this was done in Rockport, Texas, which is about 50 miles south of us on the coast. Uh, she's from there and she lives in Victoria now, but she wanted to incorporate her old hometown and her senior shots. So there was just this little, what was it, a bird watching location or something we went to? Was it was like a point. And the problem with our coastline that's close to me is the sun sets to the land, not behind on the ocean, right? It sets to the, to the, to the right of this picture, like uh -huh. over those houses and whatnot. So... Yes. I like to shoot with the sun to my client's back a lot, yeah. but this okay. picture here, I had to kind of turn more towards the inland part of the land part, but mm -hmm. I also wanted to capture the water hitting the rocks and, uh, and just bring in some of that beauty with those <laughs> piers that are running out. Some of those condos down side of the, down the road over yeah. there. Yeah. And, uh, and all those seagulls were just buzzing around like crazy. I mean, it just, everything just played really nice together that day. So. So a couple of things I noticed in this behind the scenes, like you're saying, you can see the sun hitting the back of her shoulder there. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're saying basically you had to kind of go out almost on the edge of the water to kind of shoot back so you can include the water, but the sun still is behind them. Is that, is that what you're kind of pointing out there? Exactly. Got so, it. you know, it's just me and my wife on these shots and, and to try to keep it as simple as possible. I usually just use one main light source almost 90% of the time. And then I have a, uh, the sun's my second modifier always, almost always. So good, man. And then I love, um, you mentioned the seagulls and this shot here, you can just see them all over the place. That's so cool. They were just love everywhere. That. If you look on the pier and blow it all up and you'll see them sitting along the pier, just sitting there and it's, it's just crazy. They were everywhere. It was really that cool. So cool. That's another one of those small details that just makes the photo just takes it from, you know, a great yeah. photo to just, I mean, it's, well, it's already a fantastic photo, but I just mean, it takes it to the next level. It's just so, so cool. Um, and Thank then you. lastly, so this is our last image actually. Um, again, guys, go, go check out their stuff. Uh, I mean, if you want to see more incredible senior photos and wedding photos and stuff, go, go check them out. Uh, make sure you go follow them on Instagram as well. Um, but before we go into this last image, I actually wanted to bring up the BTS first. So I wanted to give everyone kind of an idea so they can see, uh, where we're going to be shooting. Now, was this, was this right before you shot it? Or is this like a, like a Google map? This was, what, what is this exactly? So what's. What's really cool about this shot is we were actually in downtown San Antonio. This is the old historic Pearl, the brewery. And uh, I'd always known about this location, wanted to shoot this shot. I had an uh, engagement couple that was willing to do it. Uh, I took this plate shot standing in the middle of a downtown street. Uh, uh, COVID had just hit not too long before this. And uh, so people were like, just weren't out and about that much at all. And uh, it, which helped me because normally down here there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people all in this area down here. Cause it's like a restaurant area and a bar area, and a just area. a shopping area. And, uh, so I took this plate shot to kind of help me with the final result, uh, to where I can remove people. If I have to, like we were talking about earlier, plate shots are so important. So, and then here's the final image. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. I love so, this. I, you know what I love about it? I love the fact that it's so Pearl, obviously it must be something you said it's, it's a, like a, Famous it's a big there. brewery yeah it's an old historical brewery downtown san antonio and it's really beautiful down there uh, and this look at the poodle on the i don't know if you saw the poodle on the second floor of the apartment balcony over there no i didn't there's an actual poodle standing out on the balcony watching this it is crazy let's see if we can see there's it in here i love that poodle. i love yeah. that and there's also i noticed there's a plane up there right right where the grill <laughs> is so Southwest, so the San Antonio International Airport is directly behind the Pearl Brewery. So okay, the nice. Southwest Airlines, their planes just kept flying over. So I just grabbed a shot of one flying over and stuck it in this image right there where it was kind of kind of where it was at. 
Yeah. Uh, I didn't get it when I shot the actual shot, but I brought it back and to incorporate it in the picture. That is so. so cool. That is so cool. And and tell us about the lighting on this one again. How did you like this? So she couldn't, you know, Patty's mic, she's holding my mic for me using the monopod uh, with the mag box and the B10. She's standing to the right of camera. Now she's, you know, you have to realize she's standing up way over there directly to the right of them. And I'm standing in the middle of traffic. So I've got people blowing their horn at me. People are just, they're not happy with me because I'm blocking traffic to get this shot. <laughs> and I, I'm literally jumping in and out of traffic. Cause like you saw in the BTS shot, there's a police mm -hmm. officer and then a security guard. And then we have people turning down the street left and right. We're having to move out of the street, move back into the shot. So that was about five shots to make one shot. So I used five different images in layers to make, to create that one image. Wow. But again, the lighting was key, right? So it's all about the lighting. That's so cool. Love it. I love it. Hey, Kevin, I got to cool. I'm going to jump back to this image right here because a few comments came in and, and it's funny. I think the, the, the live on Facebook, I think it's like maybe delayed, maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven seconds. So sometimes I'll switch to another image and I'll see a few comments come in a little bit later. Uh, Diego had mentioned this is amazing, and I think I believe he was referring. Well, he's probably referring to all your shots because really all your shots are pretty amazing. Um, and then Derek had mentioned simple one light setup never disappoints. Uh, I agree. Sometimes we overcomplicate things, and having that exactly. one light and then using the sun as your second source is oftentimes uh, a great deal, that great thing to do. And then it looks like uh, Jay Z. I just said very well executed on this photograph here as well. So thanks, Jay Z. I appreciate it. Good, good stuff. Let's, uh, I want to bring uh, Patty in again. I'm going to, I'm going to open up the screen bigger here. Patty, come on back. I know that uh, I, I like, I like being able to see you both. Um, guys, I, this has been a, super inspiring. Seriously, I love, I love all your work. I love your editing. Do you guys, as far as your editing style goes, is there, do you sell like presets or actions or something that kind of gives you that? Cause you have this very uh, movie poster kind of feel and look to your images. Well, so, you know, not yet. Right. So I do make a lot of my own presets, uh -huh. a lot of my own actions. I've been asked this question before. And for me, it's, it's what makes me unique, unique. and different. Yep. Uh, you know, I will tell you that a lot of my stuff is, is there's some gradients involved. There's some color toning involved. There's um, so it's not just a simple little, you know, action that I use or anything like that. Sure. It's something that made and, has been created over time and evolved over time to give me this kind of specific look. And like Patty, which you mentioning off camera just now a while ago, she wanted me to point out is a lot of my inspirations come from like uh Winberg paintings or Thomas Kincaid. So these are, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of these artists or not, but I, I so know Thomas Kincaid for sure. I don't know. What's okay. the first one you said? Winberg. Winberg. Can you check them out? So, I'm an old freehand artist and I think that's where my stuff is a little bit different. So a lot of my clients tell me that my stuff looks like a painting. It's because I literally retouch the entire image uh, to give it more of that painterly kind of touch to it. And I use a Wacom tablet for a lot of that stuff. That is awesome. So I know it's funny. I know Thomas Kincaid because if I'm not mistaken, um, he is from, uh, the area where I used to live up in Northern California. Isn't he from Northern California? Yeah. Sacramento. I, I can say. No, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I've seen his work, uh, often, you know, I'm just bringing up, uh, some images here and then tell me, how do you spell the other name? Uh, Winberg. W I N D B U R G, I believe. W I N D B. And then B. Yeah. Artist. There it is. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I like this. contrast, you know, dark and contrast is what I tend to roll with more. So, wow. you know, it's, it's interesting now that you show those or you mentioned those, I can, I can see the influence. Um, I can see cool. how, you know, your editing style and the colors and things like that. I can see that there. Good stuff. Hey guys, in the, in the next uh, minute or so, before we close this out, is there any advice you would give to, you know, if, if there's a photographer trying light for the first time or, or getting into photography, is there any, particular advice you would give to those people? Yeah, just, you know, talk to people that, that you trust and know that can help you point you in the right direction. So you're not wasting a lot of money on this unnecessary product. Uh, that was one of the things that I learned early on was I bought a lot of stuff that I ended up not using. The other yeah. thing I would do is one of the biggest things that somebody told me years ago is always get your ambient in camera set the way you like it first, and then add your light and you'll be creating these images in no time. No, that's, that's, I believe that 100%.
And, and you know, one thing I've noticed too is is along those same lines is sometimes we 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 talked about this earlier, but just kind of overcomplicate where we we set up all these different mm -hmm. lights, like two or three different lights, and and then we're trying to balance it all. And so I love going back to what you had just said is that idea of just get your ambient, dial that in, and then once that's there, then add one light, second light if you absolutely need it. Um, you know, just take it easy. Don't don't uh, don't try to overcomplicate it. So. You know, Trevor, one other thing I was going to bring up is, yeah. you know, I've never went to school for th for photography. Um, mm -hmm. I'm self-taught. I've just, I've taught myself, right? Over years of just, I walk outside, I kind of know what I'm going to shoot, how I'm going to shoot it just based on the time of day and the settings on the camera now. It comes in time. So uh, you'll pick that up in, in no time. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is I, I do do all my own editing. So I've had people ask me about that. They, uh -huh. you know, thinking I outsourced it or whatever. So I do actually do all of my own editing. I just want to kind of gotcha. point that out. You know, one thing I will I will say about the editing portion of it, I find that when I edit my own photos, I learn a lot with every single session. It's like I, I pick up new things or I say, oh, I could have shot that a little bit different. And so there's things that you learn every single time. Um, I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but I just figure, you know. Oh, I do. 100%. And you, and you, you appreciate it a lot more. So uh -huh. that's so true. That's so true. Exactly. Good stuff. You guys, this has been fun. I, I, uh, it's funny. We tried this new model here with, uh, and I realize I realize I'll have to get some overlays that we can fit two people side by side. Cause this doesn't quite work. Although oh, it's kind of artsy. It's kind of artsy. I like the half face kind of thing going on. It's a little avant-garde. <laughs> <Keep pulling me. laughs> but, uh, but that's all right. We'll go back to the screen and then, and it's funny. And then I see the overlays. I like being able to see everyone's comments, but sometimes, um, this white bar, I'll have to figure out how to get rid of that as well sometimes, but this has been fun, you guys. And Thank you so much for, uh, you know, for joining me here uh, in this episode. I, this has definitely been, I, I love Friday episodes of how I shot it. Cause I feel like it's a great chance to kind of be inspired uh, going into weekend shoots, which a lot of us photographers do. So yeah. So cool. thank you for being thank here. Thank you all for having us. Thank no, you for we having appreciate us. It. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Thank you all for watching. Yeah, absolutely. And by, by the way, guys, if you are actually, I'll bring up this screen and then we'll go one last time to Kevin and Patty, but, but guys, if you, uh, if you are watching this for the first time, uh, we try to do these a couple times a week and it usually just based on the schedule of the photographer. And then after we film it here live, uh, we put them up on YouTube as well. So feel free to catch it there. Thanks so much guys for the comments. Thanks for the little emoticons and the hearts and thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. It means a lot to all of us. And uh, Kevin and Patty, I just want to close this out. There's a couple more comments here. We got Damien says great photos. We got Brian. Uh, thanks guys. We can start it off inspiring. And then uh, Jay-Z as well saying amazing photos. So um, appreciate cool, all you. you watching and Kevin and Patty Shoemake. We appreciate you guys being here with me. Thanks guys. Thank appreciate y'all. Yeah, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Everyone take care. You too.